So I want to talk to you now about pricing and the product life cycle. What is the product life cycle? Well, it's not some sort of iron law of marketing. But we have noticed that lots of products and lots of product categories seem to go through a natural cycle of growth and decline. And if you see that happening with your product or your industry, you need to know how to adapt, how to adjust your pricing tactics to take that reality into account. Now, typically we think of the product life cycle in four phases. A development phase, when the market is new, everybody's figuring things out. A growth phase, hopefully a rapid growth phase. Then a maturity phase where demand really levels off and finally a decline. And we're going to talk about each one of these phases, what typifies them, and then what kind of pricing tactics might be necessary to deal with that phase, to sort of optimize your price given that reality. Now, I like to think about it as a graph, but if it helps you, you can also think about it as a human being, if that helps your memory. The development phase is like a baby. The growth phase is like that adolescent, that 14-year-old who's got the growth spurt. The maturity phase is like a mature adult. And finally, decline is like an elderly person. If that helps your memory, certainly you can think about this that way as well. Now, we're going to vary our pricing strategies depending on which one of these people that we're looking at. So let's start with the development phase. In the development phase, what you have is a group of people, hopefully your market, that are really trying to figure out, what is this new product? Buyers may question the product utility. For example, look at that thing. What is it? Well, actually, it's an in-home bread maker. But I bet you didn't even realize that looking at that, did you? A lot of you looked at that and said, well, is that a paper shredder? Uh, is that, I don't know. Well, I had to tell you, it's a home bread maker. And the first time you would see that, when it's new to the market, you know what's going to happen? You're going to need to be told what features and benefits that have. Buyers need to be educated in the development phase of the market because they're going to look at that and they're going to say, even if they know it's a bread maker, what are those buttons for? What can this thing do? And even before you price it, you're going to have to communicate that value to your potential customers. Buyers are also going to be price sensitive. I mean, how much should that thing cost? When I look at it, I don't know what to compare it to. Is it, should, be, should it cost like a microwave or a dishwasher, a pot that you put on the stove? I, I basically have no idea. And when people don't have any idea of what something should cost, they can become quite price sensitive. They're skeptical about the price they might see on it. And finally, even though people are price sensitive, you have to realize that the price might signal the product's value. If they put too low a price on that bread maker, you will think, that thing's a piece of junk. It probably doesn't do anything. But if they put too high a price, the mind is going to say, hey, I have no idea what that is, what the value is. I'm skeptical of the price. There's no way I'm paying that much for that in-home bread maker. Now, what do you do in these situations? Well, it depends on the kind of product that you're selling. Some products have obvious benefits and they have low production costs. Think about Dropbox. Maybe some of you are familiar with Dropbox. If you're not, it's a version of cloud-based storage. So if you have files on your computer, you can put them in the Dropbox and it stores them in the cloud. It has obvious benefits. And it's also true for Dropbox to allow you to use their product, there's very low cost for them. There are little costs associated, but not much. And you use Dropbox all the time. So what's the best thing for Dropbox to do? It's probably to have trial promotions, to give it away to you, perhaps for free for a while, so that you understand those obvious benefits and want to buy more of what Dropbox has to offer. In fact, that's what Dropbox does. It allows you to try it for free. And only after you've used it and stored a lot of files in it does it begin to charge you. At that point, the benefits are clear. So in this case, very low or even zero introductory prices make sense. What if you have a product that's kind of a high price purchase? And maybe even it's a little bit complicated. This is a DeWalt drill we're looking at. When DeWalt came out with this drill, they said, how are we going to communicate the benefits? This is going to be a reasonably high price drill. Well, in that case, some amount of direct sales might make sense. And in fact, DeWalt did a version of that. They sent salespeople 
out to the job sites of the contractors, showed them the features and benefits of the drill, and that's what they used to spur sales in stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. Home Depot. If they didn't do the direct sales, they probably would not have been able to command the high prices in the market that they wanted to get for this premium quality drill. And finally, what if you have a product, you know, it's a good product like a high-end jam or jelly, but it's, it's entering a complicated market in the sense that there's a lot of players there, right? It's, a, it's kind of a saturated market. But for you, it's the development phase. The market might be saturated, but you're a new entrant. Well, what do you've got to do in that situation? You really need to focus on the distribution channels, and you're probably going to have to offer a very low price to the distribution channels, for example, a grocery store, because they have a lot of other products they could be offering besides yours. So you charge them a low price, give your distribution channel a high margin, and you may even pay them incentive fees for selling a lot of your product. So it depends. The product life cycle is important. There are some things that generalize, but the tactics that you take depend on certain characteristics of your product. And that is certainly true in the development phase as it is with all other phases of the life cycle.